Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I'm here with my project. My project has already been set up. It's ready to go. What I'm talking about, of course, is using the Stratomatic game engine to try to predict the 2020 Major League Baseball results for this year. So the um, the first part of this is going to be um, I'm going to run through a couple of sims and let you watch them along with me. I haven't done this yet. I have not simmed any game or any seasons yet at all. I've set the game up, I think, correctly. And so the results that you see on the screen when we go look at the results will be the first time I'm seeing them too. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> Just to remind everybody, what I've done is I've put every player in Major League Baseball, as far as I am able to um, figure out, on the teams that they are currently on. Then I also made players who are going to be new players this year that I know about. Uh, that would be players like, for instance, on the A's, Lazardo, um, on uh, the Washington Nationals, Carter Keyboom, players like that, that either didn't have a card last year or they had such a minor card that it was like an uncarded player or whatever, or they didn't have nearly as many innings or at-bats as they're going to get or anticipated that they will get in 2020. So I've made those players. I've also tried to factor in injuries. I've also tried to factor trends in. For instance, um, one notable trend that I did is I made Arietta even worse than he was last year. Because if you go back and you look at, um, at Arietta's statistics, since 2015, Jake Arietta, he has gotten worse every year since 2015. So I made the wild assumption that this year in 2020, pitching for the Cubs, he or pitching for Philadelphia, he will get even he will do even worse than he did the year, you know, last year, because that's been his trend for the last five years. So uh, that type of thing, I've also tried to factor in injuries. If you're somebody who gets injured a lot, I, I may have moved an injury up to a more prominent spot. Or um, if you are a pitcher who gets injured more, I probably have put someone in the rotation because I've done, the way I did the rotations is I would set up every team's rotation, but I also did the pitcher today matchups for the entire schedule. And if you're a pitcher who tends to get injured and doesn't make it through an entire season, somebody like Joe Ross, for instance, then I have put somebody in the rotation or in the pitcher today schedule for that pitcher um, for at least a few starts and maybe quite a few starts. So I've tried to take into account any trend, any whatever, you know, player assumptions to try to come out with the most accurate model for what 2020 may look like using Stratomatic's game. So I think we are ready to go. Um, like I said, the first, I'm going to play through probably the first couple um, seasons, just look at some stats, look around, see how some players did, look at um, the you know look at the league leaders see what some of the league leaders are and then um after that i'm going to turn off the camera and then i'm going to go and do several sims 20 sims or whatever and i'm going to accumulate the statistics for those and um and then i'm going to come back with a composite of like 20 seasons worth of this is you know what we can expect based on 20 seasons like for instance the white Sox average record for 22 seasons at that point is 
X and X, you know, X wins and X losses. Um, the Indians have this many wins and this many losses based on the model. So that's how we're going to do it. So without further ado, let's get started. We want to go up here to schedule. And also, I want to mention this is a 148 game schedule. It's not 162 because, as you well know, uh, because of what's going around, there probably will not be um, a 162 game schedule. Although there is some talk of trying to figure out ways to get it in. But I'm going with 148. Um, and that's probably shooting in the middle somewhere because. If they start the season in um, early June, late May, early June, to up until mid-June, they can only get in about 100 games or 100, 100 to 106 games. If they try to figure out a way to get 162 in, then they try to figure out a way to get 162 in. But I... I, sh I kind of uh, hedged my bets and put it right in the middle at 148, that maybe they can figure out a way to get 148 games in. So, um, and, and also for these first two Sims, um, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to do the regular season. I'm not going to, I'm not going to set up playoffs and do playoffs and who would win in the playoffs, especially since that's really kind of, I mean, I want to say it's luck because um, you have two teams of about the same type of talent. They, um, you know, in, in, in a best of seven, a short best of seven or a short best of five or, a, or even a one game playoff, either one of them can probably win. So I don't know that there's really any sense in going through the playoffs and saying, OK, this is going to be the World Series champ. That is probably even shakier than doing 22 seasons and saying the, the, these are what the team's records will be based on 22 seasons. So let's get to it. We'll say um, play to the day. And then the uh, computer will start doing the sim. You can see the sim is going on right here. I tried to cut down as much on how much time it's going to take to simulate. Um, by trying to get rid of box scores and things, but it's really not going as quickly as I might have hoped. Um, but we'll see. So anyway, um, so let me see. What else should I remind you about um, that we've done in the season? Um, I mean, that's really kind of that's that's pretty much it, you know. With the uh, the intent being of course, to try to figure out who would be the winning team this season in uh, in Major League Baseball. Who would who would win each division? Who would be the likely um, you know front runners to be in the NLCS and the ALCS? To potentially see how bad teams can or might actually be. Um, so anyway, um, we, uh, it's going to be very interesting because I am really dying to see how this new look White Sox team with Encarnacion and, um, yes, Monty Grandal and, um, you know, players like that, see how they're going to do. Another thing that I did is if somebody had a year that I think was just really off the charts, especially for them, um, I might have brought them down to earth a little bit. And that, I think I did that with Giolito. Um, I probably added a hit to each side of his card, something like that, because, um, the year that he had was just really ridiculously off the charts and it came out of nowhere. So sometimes you want to make the, um, 
you know, there's just times that you want to make the assessment that this is not probably going to happen again, or the likelihood of it happening again is not that, um, not that great. Um, although even sometimes when you do that, you can be wrong because I remember in one of my leagues I had, I had drafted, I had originally drafted Altuve. And I had him for, uh, this was one of the leagues where, you know, after five years, he becomes a free agent. So in the fourth year, um, he did whatever he did for my team. But in real life that year, he hit 340. So I traded him to a guy because I thought I was trading him. Um, or maybe he was coming off 340 and I had used him during a 340 season. So I traded him to a guy because I figured he's not, this guy is not going to hit 340 again. Nobody hits 340 in Major League Baseball anymore. But turns out I was wrong about that. So, um, so anyway, I guess I will um, pause the computer right here and then I'll wait until the season is done uh, simming. And then we will be back to see what the results were. Okay, so we're back, and it looks like it's saying that the season is done on September 2nd. So I will take a look. Um, first of all, yeah, okay, so let's go to League Statistics. And this is what we've got. And it looks like it did finish the season, and here are the records for... The all the way down to the um, NL Central. We'll look at the NL West in a minute. But um, well, you can see Chicago finished third, seventy-six and seventy-two. I mean, the White Sox, kind of uh, kind of disappointing, I think. So in the East, you got the Yankees winning the uh, division with an eighty-nine and fifty-nine record, and Boston. Four games behind them at 85 and 63, ahead of Tampa Bay. I'm a little surprised about that. And Baltimore, what about Baltimore finishing in front of Toronto in this sim? That's that's pretty crazy. So then you got Minnesota winning the Central with Cleveland um, 11, finished 11 games behind them and Chicago 19 games. I mean, that's what Chicago did last year with a much worse team. Finished like 19 games behind him. Behind, yeah, behind Minnesota. Um, and then you got Detroit finishing ahead of Kansas City, which is a little bit of a shock, but not a big one. Uh, then you got the AL West, Houston winning it with 107 wins. Man. And then followed by Oakland. And then the LA Angels, Texas, and Seattle. So now let's page down a little bit, and then you can see um, Washington winning the East, which is a little bit of a shock. And not only that, but Atlanta finishing eight games behind them with only 77 wins. And then the Mets with 69 wins. Of course, that's without Syndergaard, which we now know they won't have in 2020, no matter what. Then you got Miami at 68 and 80. And uh, ahead of Philadelphia, Philadelphia, 67 and 81 in this sim. This is some crazy stuff, real unexpected stuff here. Um, then you got Cincinnati winning the Central, which is a little bit of a surprise. Most people thought that um, St. Louis will win it, although Cincinnati has greatly improved. And um, But I expected the same type of thing to ha happen with the White Sox, and it didn't. So, uh, and then you got Milwaukee in third, and then the uh, Cubs at 79 and 69. Let's see. Go back up here. Yeah, seven, yeah, Chicago White Sox, 76 and 72. Now, for a 148-game schedule, that's still over 500, but still, I you know. 
19 games behind Minnesota, just like they actually did. And then you've got um, the L.A. Dodgers winning the West, which I don't think is a surprise to anyone, and Arizona finishing second, which you probably could see happening. San Diego coming in third, and then Colorado followed by San Francisco. And then the wild card standings would be Boston against Cleveland would be the, I guess, the one game play in in the American League. And then in the National League, it would be St. Louis against Milwaukee. So that's where you're at on that. Now let's take a look at the White Sox statistics. Team stats, uh, 76 and 72. We were 41 and 33 at home and 35 and 39 on the road. Uh, so, yeah, and we were three and one. Here's what we were against every team. Three and one against the Orioles. Two and two against the Red Sox. One and three against the Yankees. Two and two against Tampa. One and three against Toronto. In our own division, we were 10 and 12 against the Indians, 14 and 8 against Detroit, 13 and 9 against Kansas City, but only 8 and 14 against the Twins. So that probably, well, that was a big reason why we finished as far behind them as we did. And then 2 and 2 against the Astros, 1 and 3 against LA, 2 and 2 against um, Oakland, 4 and 0 against. Uh, the Mariners and three and one against Texas. And then against the NL Central, which as I said, in this the way that the computer set the schedule up, we only we play the NL Central instead of the NL West, which is what it was slated to actually be this year. And we were three and one against the Cubs, one and three against Cincinnati, two and two against the Brewers, two and two against Pittsburgh, and two and two against St. Louis. So now let's go team stats. Let's go look at the primary statistics. And as you can see on the screen, here's the hitter, mostly the hitters. It goes into the pitchers, but here's the mostly what the uh, hitters did. Um, you've got uh, 36 home runs by Lewis Robert. I would love to see that. And he hit 273. Got 26 homers by Moncada with a 297 batting average. Uh, 33 homers by Jimenez. Uh, 39 homers by Encarnacion, who apparently stayed healthy enough to do that. 29 homers by Grandal and a 239 batting average, though. Abreu hit 26 homers but hit 233, and we had a 254 batting average overall. Uh, you look down at the pitchers, and you got Kopech at seven and one. He had nine starts in this um, in this uh, fantasy projected season. Seven and one with a two twenty three earned run average. Uh, Colome was two and five with a two forty three and twenty eight saves. Um, let's see. Got Keuchel. Keuchel was fourteen and six with a three twenty one. Giolito was 12 and 11 with a 359 earned run average. Um, you got, uh, well, you can see what everybody was. Ronaldo Lopez was only 7 and 11 with a 573, so he still had a rough season. Um, and Evan Marshall, yeah, Evan Marshall had a bad year, and so did Ruiz and. Even Ben Walos got in there a little bit, so so yeah, not the uh, not the results you would want to have seen. Um, I mean, we can check out a couple of other teams just in case there's fans of different differing teams out there. So let's go look at the Yankees and see what they did. Here's what their hitters did. Um, Got Miguel Andahar, who would play left field, or at least was projected to play left field. He hit 322 with 15 homers. LeMahieu with 29 homers and a 297 batting average. Gardner with 33 home runs. Torres with 36. Um, 
You got uh, uh, Gary Sanchez with 28 homers. Stanton hit 230 with 25 homers in 400 at bats. Um, got Judge with 37 home runs and 84 RBIs. And these are really, and remember, these are, you know, these guys are hitting 30 something home runs with in only 148 game schedule. So that's really good. Um, you got guy, hmm, older, a villain, and a tarot didn't even pitch much. Then out of Vino with an 064 earned run average and a 7 and 3 record, 34 hits allowed in 56 innings. Wow. Chapman with a 223 earned run average and only 33 hits in 60 and two thirds innings. Cole was 17 and 6 with a 324 earned run average. So then you got Hap, uh, J.A. Hap with a 15 and 7 record, 467 earned run average, and uh, Montgomery, Jordan Montgomery, only 10 and 10 with a 547. So that's the Yankees. Let's take a look at um, hmm, who would be another big team that people would be interested in. Maybe Atlanta. Let's see with Atlanta. Um, so here's what you got for them. 47 home runs by Freddie Freeman. 47 in 148 game schedule. 36 by Acuna. 114 RBIs by Freeman, crazy, in 148 games. That's Hack Wilson territory right there. Um, so then here's the pitching for them. Uh, you got um, Felix the Cat, 6-6 six and six with a 476 earned run average in 90 innings of work. Hamels with a 7 and 12 record and a 486 earned run average. Um, so, anyway, there's, yeah, that's Atlanta. Uh, let's see the Dodgers. Let's go take a look at the Dodgers. You got Bellinger hitting 323 with 56 home runs and 130 RBIs in a 148 game schedule. So maybe I should throttle him back a little, maybe. I don't know. Um, you got Betts hitting 306 for them with 26 home runs. 53 home runs by Max Muncie. 53 home runs in 148 games. That's some crazy stats. Um, so let's see here. You got Bueller, Bueller with a 15 and 2 record and a 392 earned run average. Bueller, Bueller. All right, so let's go look at another team. How about the uh, Washington Nationals, since they are the defending Major League Baseball champions? Um, go to team stats. There they are, 85 and 63, went in their division. They were 39 and 35 at home, 46 and 28 on the road. Pretty good. Um, so here's their primary stats. Got Zimmerman hitting 341. Wow. I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, then you got Juan Soto hitting 324 with 43 home runs and 122 RBIs. Castro with 24 homers and 100 RBIs. Team hit 269 overall. Then you got, uh, let's see what we've got here. Strasburg was 18 and 2. Uh, Scherzer was only 14 and 10. Corbin 11 and 12, and Anibal Sanchez 11 and 8. They had a 370 earned run average overall. So let's take a look. Um, nah, 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 nah. Let's see. 
Let's take a look at uh, Toronto, those young players that Toronto's got. And as you can see, Toronto really didn't, I mean, I wasn't able to find a lot of players for Toronto, like position players. Um, so, I mean, that's probably part of the problem that they had in this sim, because I put it on try to control over usage, but, you know, the computer was probably had its hands tied because there aren't a lot of guys um, on their roster as far as position players. But you got Bichette hitting 290 with uh, 28 homers, 34 homers for Travis Shaw, 30 homers for Hernandez. I was, by the way, predicting a comeback for Travis Shaw. I was assuming that last year was just an aberration with him. Uh, that may not be the case, and then they would be even worse if, you know, if he was worse, if he was like almost like what he did last year. Um, Ryu was 15 and 8 with a 248 earned run average. Of course, you know, I guess you would kind of have to plan on that happening. Uh, Rourke, Tanner Rourke, 8 and 13 with a 614 earned run average. So, yeah, they had a 529 team ERA overall, and they only hit 233. So, let's go take a look at Philly, downtown Philly. Uh, you got uh, Harper up there, 311, 29 homers. Uh, Bruce, Jay Bruce with 22 homers. Real Muto with 27, and Hoskins with 27. And then you got, uh, so let's see. Huh. You got um, Nola, 13 and 7 with a 392. Wheeler, only 10 and 9 with a 456. So here's my Arietta experiment 10 and 13 with a 693. Like I said, worse every single year. And you would assume that this would be the last year that they would play him. So let's go, uh, let's try a different thing now. Let's go take a look at um, league, st let's go to league stats and uh, let's go to um, yeah, league leaders. So you got for batting average, um, you got, and this throws, does it throw them all together? Yeah, it does. Throws them all together. So you've got Yelich hitting 331, Winkler, Winker hitting uh, 326, Soto at 324, Bellinger 323. Um, run scored Bellinger 129. Um, Hits, Blackman, 198 hits. Devers for Boston, 194 hits. Home runs, 56 for Bellinger, 53 for Springer, 53 for Muncie, 52 for Yelich, 51 for El Tuve, 50 for Aquino and Suarez and Trout. Wow. I mean, that's some stuff right there. Um, so stolen bases, Acuna 53, 45 for Lewis Robert, my man, Lewis Robert. Um, so let's see here. You got home runs. Yeah, home runs. Ballinger, okay, yeah, I did the home runs. So, let's go down to the pitching. For ERA, you got Ryu leading the entire league, both leagues, with a 248 earned run average, and Flaherty with a 257. DeGrom at 260, Verlander at 261. Um, innings, you got 239 for Ryu, 234 for Verlander. Those are probably high because those would be high even really for a 162-game schedule. But I'm not going to go in there and tweak it any more than that. Um, 
So that's where we are right there. Um, I will now pop out of there and we will restart the league. Yes. And I will set the, uh, set it to start again and play today. And again, I won't bore you with the day by day stats where, you know, scores rolling in. I will just, uh, I'm going to pause it right here while the game still plays. And then I will come back when it is almost done. And then we will look at the stats again. All right. So the uh, season now is winding down, as you can see. It's uh, passing August 17th now and will end on September 2nd. So we will see if we get similar stats to what we did in the first season sim uh, or whether these are like vastly different and that's the reason for doing why you got to do like 20 at least 20 of them because you could have like you know you saw the white Sox finish third and now in this sim they could finish first so you can't really draw any um, meaningful conclusion from those two results if in fact that's what were to happen so uh, that's why, uh, you know, I, I think I will do another video at a later time where I announce the results of the 20 seasons or the 22 seasons or the 25 seasons that I completely sim and give you the uh, every team's record um, for sure. Um, and then uh, we'll also delve a little bit into the White Sox stats and then maybe some key players throughout the league and see how they did. Um, so we are approaching the end of the season. Okay, so let's go take a look. Go up here, league stats. And what have we got here? Chicago 74 and 74 just 500 again i really shouldn't complain about that because they've been under 500 for the last few years but you got minnesota again winning the division 101 uh cleveland again finishing second 25 games behind them and now chicago 27 games uh behind them kansas city this time though finished in front of detroit who only won 48 games up in the east you got baltimore uh, finishing last um, even worse than Toronto this time around. But New York still winning the um, East again with 89 wins. And this time Tampa Bay finishing second, only four games behind them. And Boston at um, 83 and 65, six games behind. Houston again winning the uh, AL West. Um, LA this time finishing second instead of third. And Oakland finishing third instead of second and then seattle and texas duking it out there in the bottom again you got washington again winning the east and i think the, again with 89 wins i think that's what they had in the first sim if i don't uh if i remember correctly and then atlanta finishing again second behind them uh with a 78 and 70 record and the mets at 76 and 72 and then Philadelphia at 72 and 76. Um, Milwaukee winning the Central this time from and not Cincinnati. In fact, Cincinnati this time was under 500. See, again, perfect example of why you got to run like 20 to 25 Sims because, you know, you couldn't tell anything meaningful about Cincinnati on just these two Sims. One Sim, they won the Central, and then the other one, they're the fourth place team. And then you got, again, um, the NL West being won by LA and Arizona uh, finishing second again. But this time San Francisco sneaks in there into third place, although third place with a terrible record instead of San Diego. And uh, so the wild card would in this uh, season, Sim, would be Tampa Bay versus Boston. Again, Boston in that um, wild card 
a playoff game. And then the NL would be St. Louis against the Chicago Cubs this time. So let's go take a look at Chicago statistics, just like we did before. 74 and 74, 38 and 36 at home. Only 36 and 38 on the road this time. Um, and then look at the primary stats. Uh, you got um, Jimenez hitting 29 homers. Um, 34 homers for Canarcion. 31 for Lewis Robert, but this time he only hit 254. Um, yeah, Abreu hit 255 with 29 homers and 85 uh, RBIs. So this time we hit 261, which is, I think, a little better than it was last time. You got Aaron Bummer with a 272 earned run average, a 3 and 2 record, and 7 saves. 26 saves for Colome. Um, Evan Marshall this time was a lot better. He was a lot better. And again, goes back to my point. This is why you got to run several sims, do the stats for many, many sims. Because right now, um, you know, you couldn't tell anything meaningful about Evan Marshall. Got Cease down there at 8 and 7 with a 744. I don't remember what he was last time, but we will see once I have accumulated all these statistics but that doesn't really uh, bode very well for him um giolito 15 and 8 with a 406 keichel 12 and 13 with a 459 so if you want to look at those stats for um chicago you can pause the video and take a look if you're a chicago fan let's take a look again at the yankees see what kind of stuff they've been up to uh, and a hard this time hitting 302. I think overall this time the Yankees didn't hit quite as well. They hit 257 as a team. And I think they had a couple guys at least in the 330s last time in sim number one. Uh, but 44 homers for Glaber Torres. Um, and then uh, Seed and Jordan Montgomery. He was a lot better in the second sim. 9 and 11 with a 447 earned run average. Um, Cole, 12 and 6 with a 321. So there you go with that. Um, let's go take a look at the Phillies again. The Phillies, of course, finishing 72 and 76, this time under 500. Harper hit 323 with 44 home runs. That would be great if he did that again because I've got him on one or two of my strat teams. One, definitely one. Uh, yeah. And then you got Hoskins, 28 home runs, 101 RBIs. He broke the century mark on the RBIs. Uh, there you go, Arietta. Arietta with a 555 earned run average, 12 and 10. A little better than he was in the first sim. Uh, you got Nola, 13 and 9 with a 402. So they had a 466 earned run average. Take a look at Atlanta. Um, Freeman this time hit only 40 home runs with 103 RBIs. So he wasn't quite as good this time. He wasn't quite as off the charts this time. Uh, but 58 stolen bases for Acuna. That's, that's crazy. Um, you got Soroka, 16 and 11 with a 266 earned run average. 11 and 8 record for Max Freed with a 418 earned run average. Let's go take a look at the Boston Red Sox. How about them? Team that's made both playoffs in both uh, sims so far. You got Verdugo hitting 306, their new acquisition. Uh, Devers, 23 homers, 84 RBIs. They hit 263 as a team. Um, Workman, 4-4 four four with 29 saves. 
So there you go. Go take a look at the other New York team, the New York Mets, in this one. You got Nunez. Nunez? Hitting 344. Who is Nunez? Then you got, man, you got some good uh, hitters here. Alonzo hit 46 home runs with 114 RBIs. And now here's the pitching for the Mets. And uh, Porcello pulling down a 368 and 11 and 10 record. DeGrom 13 and 8 with a 320 earned run average. Uh, let's go see. Um, let's go see Washington again, defending World Series champions. Zimmerman again, 314. This time he hit 314 with only one home run. I don't know what he hit for home runs the last time, but only one home run? My God. Um, yeah, and uh, where's uh, Keyboom? Keyboom hitting 235. But if you uh, ever watch Nats talk, and I don't know because sometimes you can get it outside of the uh, DC area, but they, according to the pitcher on that um, program, Mike Wallace, he says that if as long as Keyboom plays decent defensively, his offense almost won't matter unless it's really really horrible so you can take that for what it is but so uh let's see what they've got here you can see what they did um pitching wise corbin was 10 and 10 with a 376 strasburg 438 and only a 12 and 10 record and uh Where's sure oh sure is are 17 and 5 with a 281. So let's take a quick look at the um, league stats and then go to league leaders. Now you got Merrifield uh, leading the league with a 344 batting average. Trout at 333 behind him. Uh, run scored Yelich 127. Uh, hits 218 for Merrifield, so him and Blackman broke the 200 mark. Home runs 50 for Bellinger, 49 for Garver, 48 for Suarez. Um, stolen uh, stolen base percentage, Mondesi at 918. Stolen bases overall, Acuna at 58. So let's go down here. Um, take a look at the pitching. Wins 25 for Verlander. Bueller with 18. Flaherty with 18. And a bunch of guys with 17. Uh, let's see. ERA, you got Yarborough with 252. Wow. And uh, Verlander at 266, Montas at 265. So that's what you got. Anything you want to look at, you just pause the video and take a look. So that's what we uh, that's what we got there for you. And as I said, what I'm going to do is the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a later video where I will summarize the standings, the Major League Baseball standings. And then I will also um, do the White Sox statistics for that time. Not going to do every team because even just accumulating all of the White Sox stats for 25 seasons is going to take a while. So I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, hope your team makes the playoffs. <laughs> uh, subscribe, remember, subscribe, hit the bell, send it to whoever you think might be interested. But for right now, that's going to be it for me. That's a wrap. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.